the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Um, as a priest, we're called many times to be with people when they're at the end of their life. And recently, um, I was called to visit with someone who had been struggling with cancer for quite a while. And it turned that at this point, the cancer uh, had, was overcoming her body. And she was told she only had a week or two to live. And so I went and I, what we do, we come, we call your priest, not just when we're dying, but hopefully anytime feel free to call your priest when you're in the hospital to pray with you. Um, but in this case, I knew it was dire. And so we, we, I met with her, prayed with her, um, heard her confession, and then I just left her with, you know, the Jesus prayer. Uh, are you, you know, are you familiar with this prayer? She really, I wasn't sure, I'm sure she was, but she was also struggling with the cancer. And so I wrote it down for her. And I came back a week later to visit her. And the, the transformation was incredible. She was so full of God's light. And she just said to me, I can't describe to you how how the presence of God is in my heart right now. She says, I can't wait to meet him. I've never had someone tell me that. I can't wait to meet him. And I can't describe to you what I'm feeling right now. But it is everything. It is everything. And when I heard her say that, I said, well, you've received everything, haven't you? You've received everything. God is everything. And he's the only thing, actually. Not just everything, but the only thing that actually exists and is full of life. And, and I thought I could bring this in today with the gospel just because of that flip, that sudden transformation that can happen in someone's life. And so we, we hear this calling of these fishermen today, you know, and, you, and they, you would think that these were voted in their high school least likely to be called to anything significant in their life, most likely. There were, there were, <laughs> there were no high schools back there. You know what I mean. They, they, people looked at them, they were men who worked with their hands. And if you think about what they did, it was actually quite an extraordinary profession that they would you know, risk their lives many times to go out into the sea and to go fishing. And along with that would come, and they didn't have all the equipment we have today. They had to rely on their intuition, on their, on their understanding of the, the sea and the fish. And they had to rely upon God. Because they understood that when our nets are full, this was a blessing from God. And when our nets were not full, something was off. And so our Lord, in, now he didn't pick all fishermen, but many of them were. <laughs> Illiterate, uneducated men who worked with their hands. And with, with these men, who I'm sure in their minds um, didn't quite grasp at all who this man was, because we know they struggled with his identity as they go on and, and follow, start following him. But in that moment, a, a, a switch is turned in their life. And I can only think that it sensed in Christ the life that he was carrying with him. And when they looked at their nets and their life, on the hard life they had on the sea, they saw it all of a sudden in, in its in proper perspective. We're, we're killing <laughs> fish so that we can live. And this is the enslavement to the elemental spirits that St. Paul talks about in today's epistle. They're, in other words, the, the things of this earth have no life in them. And we might think in the elemental spirits might have been actually referenced to astrology and following the planets and trying to, you know, get in tune with the creation and all these things. They're lifeless. 
they're absolutely lifeless. And so they must have sensed deep inside that there's something more to this man, that we're going to leave our profession, leave our father, and just follow him. And the rest of their um, maturing um, is what we watch and what we, what we as Orthodox Christians have inherited from them, that they matured in that calling. And eventually they came to understand at Pentecost that this indeed was not just a prophet. He wasn't just a great man. This was God's very son in the flesh who came to give us life and give us eternal life. And that in Christ now, our creation has been recreated. St. John Chrysostom says, you know, St. Paul, when he says, all those who've been baptized into Christ have put on Christ, he says, it, it, it's no different than saying, you have been born of Christ. Born of Christ. And now he is the, the common um, heart of the church. He is the heart of life. And all of us have that shared life in him. And I've said this many times. I hope I'm not getting tired of hearing it. <laughs> but that unity in Christ is what unites us to each other. And that's where love for us becomes defined. And so when St. Paul also says love does not seek its own, he's saying our love must always be towards the other and not towards myself. And that maturing that the disciples had to go through and that we as baptized Christians have to go through in our life, we're still maturing, we're still coming to understand what this is, this hidden treasure that was given to us when we were infants. But hopefully we're unveiling what that treasure is. And that, that treasure is this life given to us in Christ. And it's that, um, that denying of ourself, the constant dying to self-love, to making myself the center of the universe, the center of everything else going on around me. We live in a world today where that type of expression of, of love is rare, but that's the, the love of Christ. It knows no boundaries. It sees the other as someone, as part of ourselves, not independent of them. We don't say, oh, what, why would I help this person? I don't have any connection. They're a stranger to me. They're not a stranger to our Lord. They're absolutely one with the Lord. And our ministry to them is our ministry to the Lord. And our ministry to them is our ministry to one another. And, and, and that's what we're celebrating today. The, this Sunday, as we mentioned, we remember all the saints of North America. Saint Herman of, of Alaska, um, we've talked about him in the, the book on the art of prayer. He was actually from the Valam Monastery in uh, what was then Russia, Finland. And he goes to, to Alaska. At that time, the Russians had, um, had part of the, what we call the northern part of Alaska. There was, they were doing um, fur trading up there. And so he goes there. And he suffers incredible hardship. And even from the Russian Christians who were doing the fur trading, were persecuting the Aleuts in Alaska and treating them terribly. And so he, he had this incredible uh, vision as a, as a monk to leave the monastery with other monks and to go out into the world and to, and to bring the gospel there. And so we have today saints, I don't know if you know St. John of Maximovich of San Francisco. You can go to the city, look him up. His body is still um, incorrupt in the, in the Russian Orthodox Church there in the city. Uh, there's St. Raphael of Brooklyn, we call him, a recent saint who was canonized. So it's showing us that the, the Spirit of God, who is the, the Spirit of the tradition, the holy tradition, doesn't stop breathing in our church, but it takes people to answer the call. And Father Zizulius, uh, Zizulius says, the reason they were able to respond so quickly was because they didn't answer with their minds, they answered with their hearts. 
they felt it in their heart that this was a, a, something that required a complete surrendering of their lives to the Lord. Sometimes we think about things too much <laughs> and we should just follow our heart and let God take care of the rest because I'm sure those fishermen had no idea what they were getting themselves into. And neither did I <laughs> as a priest. No idea what God was calling me to do. I thought it was all well, going to be roses and whatever. Love Jesus and everything's going to be fine. There's always going to be times where that is going to, life is, in the church is going to mature you. But never allow those things, those challenging t times in our own church to send us off the, off the track we need to be on. So Christ is everything. And may we come to that realization why we're healthy, why we have all the things that God has given us and not waste our time and not waste the days apart from him. And, and as we give our life to him, we, we actually receive a hundredfold back. And that's where we receive our freedom from the elemental spirits of this world and from all the things we think have life in them. Only Christ is life and light. To him be given glory. Amen. Και στρατιών των φιλασσόντων το άχραντον σου σώμα ανέστη στη μέρος ο τίδωρο.